And this edition of the Fun Astrology Podcast is brought to you by The Book of the Moon, written by the brilliant author Stephen Forrest. Everybody says, I love his writing style. Pick it up from Amazon.com and you don't need a subscription to Audible or Apple Books. Welcome in to the Hump Day Wednesday, May 29th edition of the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller, thanks so much for joining us. I think we'll have a little quicker episode today, taking quite a bit of your time the last two days. But I wanted to just check in on this, especially this big aspect today of Mars conjoining Chiron. Jenny talks about it in the Moon to Sun weekly forecast on YouTube, Fun Astrology channel. But let's take a look at the full spectrum of what's going on in the sky today. We have a long void, of course, this afternoon. It begins at 1020 this morning Eastern and lasts for 10 and a quarter hours all the way until 832 when the moon enters Pisces. So the moon has a long goodbye to Aquarius and it ends with a square aspect to Uranus. So the whole lunar thing is a little bit edgy today until we get to that Piscean moon tonight. And then, obviously, for the next couple of days, heightened intuition, heightened perception, and heightened illusion and delusion. Stay on the high timeline side of that for sure. I love when the moon is in its own sign of cancer and in Pisces. You just know that the radar is going to be more dialed in to the home office. So be sure to pick up the, <laughs> pick up the phone if it rings. You know who's probably on the other end. Now let's talk about the other big aspect, and this is the one I wanted to focus on because at 1.08 p.m. Eastern, all times Eastern, always here, Mars conjoins Chiron. We've been experiencing this. It's not new, but it does peak today. In fact, I went back and put a 10-degree orb. So when was Mars approaching from within 10 degrees? That takes us back a couple of weeks, back to May 15th. Now, this is all happening in the sign of Aries, and you know who the head bear is in Aries. <laughs> it's Mars. So Mars, the North Node, and Chiron all in Aries. Can you spell the word transformation? So Chiron's symbolism is of a wound or wounds. I have a couple that are primary that show up when I change house systems. Uh, one shows up in equal and placidus. The other shows up in whole sign. These are things that we brought in from the past. Don't try to find it in this life. It manifests, but it originated before. It is a recurring theme. We move it forward, but just like Chiron in mythology, the centaur who injured his foot with a poison-tipped arrow, Chiron, the peaceful centaur who was known for his healing abilities, and yet after the injury was not able to heal himself. He traded his earthly immortality for mortality so that he could have a place in the sky. And there his healing and teaching continues even to our lives today. And actually it's a beautiful picture because as a healer, he points us to this area of our life so we can focus on it. Chiron right now in the sky is at 22 degrees in the sign of Aries. And Mars, the ruler of Aries, comes right up to Chiron today at 1.08 p.m. Eastern. If we just take a look at the characteristics of Mars, for some, this may play out as an internal war. And like Chiron in the mythology fable, you never know where somebody is, especially if they have withdrawn into their cave. Often it's people who are being silent who we have to worry about the most. How is that wound affecting them now? Some may be fighting against their wound. Mars, the god of war, pressing in resistance against it and against the process of healing it. And for yet others, perhaps they have looked into their chart. They know exactly what those wounds are or wound. And during this Mars through Aries couple of weeks here that we've had, have been aggressively working toward resolving it, using Mars' boldness to their advantage to move forward on their karmic path. And we get a little bit of extra juice with this aspect today because the moon in Aquarius is in a sextile aspect to this aspect of Chiron and Mars. Sometimes we may experience some pain around our wounds like I did during the time of this aspect. It wasn't, I mean, it was before this happened, but it was certainly moving toward it. And that pain can often launch us into more gain it was the story of Chiron. He was a healer. He was a teacher. And he took a hit. And from that hit, 
He found a place in the sky to be helping you and me today with our wounds, pointing them out and showing us the way. So use that Mars strength to your advantage on your highest timeline. This is journaling time. This is self-time. See what the universe has for you. The moon's in there, too, so you can tap into the intuition. I wish you the best. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you back tomorrow.